Tano Sports Central will be going over an exchange or preview this offseason, and it will be over the UCF Knights, and this is a team that went 10-3 in the 2019 season. And the overall is a great season for UCF, making it back to 10 wins. Overall, of course, they went undefeated a couple of seasons ago, but still this team had a great season, and how will they do in 2020 is what we're going to be going over here today. We're going to be going over a few players that this team will be losing, who they're going to be returning, and also going over their schedule for the first time this offseason. Starting off the games that Central Florida has had since November, we start on November 2nd when they played Houston. That was a home game, 44-29. to They got the win there against them. Uh, they also had a loss, very tough one to Tulsa on November 8th. That was probably the worst loss that UCF had last season. They lost that one 31-34. And then on the 23rd, they had a bye week. And then on the 23rd, they played Tulane on the road in New Orleans. They got the win there, 34-31. to And they also had a good win in South Florida to finish off the regular season, 34-7. to So you know, overall, the regular season went pretty good. They went into their bowl game. Um, with a pretty great 9-3 record, and they ended up playing Marshall in their bowl game, got the win there as well, 48-25, which, you know, they absolutely blew out Marshall, so that was a good way to end the season for UCF, and, you know, once again, 10-3, still a really great season for UCF, no doubt. As for the trend for this team, between September and October, they were 6-2, and then between November and the rest of the season, they were 4-1, and one. so they were very consistent with how they were for the majority of the season, no major... Uh, no major improvements or no major declines. That is uh, certainly something that's good for UCF is to be uh, very consistent. If you're a consistent team, that's going to help you a ton in the long run. Moving on to returning production for UCF, they returned their starting quarterback in Dylan Gabriel, which he had a great season last year. He had over 3,600 yards, nearly 3,700, and he also had 29 touchdowns with seven interceptions. So, yeah, his touchdown and interception ratio was really good as well, just over a 4-1. to one. So, uh, yeah, certainly once again, he's a really great quarterback, putting up uh, nearly – 3,700 yards last season, and yeah, it wouldn't surprise me to see him hit over 4,000 if he's able to stay healthy next season. I mean, for him, uh, being a quarterback that's not very experienced, yeah, he's got a very bright future in ahead, ahead of him for sure. I mean, for him, in his first main year of uh, of playing as a starting quarterback, for him to put up, once again, over 3,500 yards in general is really, really impressive. They returned their top running back, Otis Anderson, which he had just over 1,000 yards with eight touchdowns last season, so that's going to be a big return as well. They lose their second running back in Adrian Killens, uh, which he had just right around 750 yards last season, so that's probably going to be uh, one of the tougher losses of this offense. They returned their running back threes, and or re- three and four, Thompson and McRae. Uh, Bentavious Johnson had just over 620 yards. Meanwhile, Greg McRae had just right over 600 yards, so... Yeah, both of those running backs are going to be good to return for sure. They'll have three really good running backs coming back next season. Uh, so this running back core, in my opinion, is pretty much set for the next couple of seasons at least. They do lose their top receiver, Gabriel Davis, uh, which he was a very good player, over 1,200 yards with 12 touchdowns. So yeah, that's going to be a tough loss there as well. Uh, but they do return their second and third wide receivers, Trey Nixon and Marlon Williams. Trey Nixon had just over 830 yards last season. And meanwhile, Marlon Williams had just over 700. So yeah, two really good receivers in Trey Nixon. Trey Nixon and Marlon Williams coming back. So uh, that's going to be huge for this offense, huge for Dylan Gabriel, uh, their quarterback in general. As far as the offensive line goes, this team loses three starters. So you got to watch out. That's going to be the position that's most hit probably on this entire team. Uh, so yeah, this offensive line will be a bit questionable going into 2020. Uh, but they do also lose two defensive linemen, one linebacker, and one in the secondary on defense. So this defense does lose four overall, so you got to watch out for that. Um, but overall, I mean, four losses on the defense really isn't all that terrible. Typically, that's right around the average that most teams lose on the defense, um, or most sides in general, as far as starters go. Uh, most teams lose three to four um, on both sides of the ball, which for UCF losing four, that's pretty right around average. But yeah, it brings up the question. Chances of an ace AC title run for UCF in 2020. Certainly, this was a team that uh, over the past couple of years before 2019, I mean, they were really competing for some uh, like national titles. I mean, if you remember that one season where they had Scott Frost, their uh, head coach, that one year they went undefeated. They, I believe, they beat Auburn. I think it was in the Peach Bowl. So, yeah, UCF definitely was a team that year that could have honestly went on to the College Bowl playoff, but. Um, but nonetheless, we're talking about now, and so chances of an AAC title run for next season, it's tough to say right now. Once again, we're still pretty early on, but considering they do return their starting quarterback who had over 3,600 yards, they also return their top running back, and they're running back three and four, which both of those running backs had a good amount of yards last season, and this receiving core is looking good. Honestly, for UCF, I definitely think, think that they're going to make a good run for it 
Uh, it wouldn't surprise me to see them make 10 wins once again next season. Uh, that definitely is something that I do expect them to do. But as far as an AAC title run, once again, I do expect them to contend for sure. I'm not quite sure uh, whether I'd say that they will win uh, the conference championship or not quite yet. But I do expect them to hang right around in there. It would not surprise me to see UCF be a team uh, that is right up there to be competing for that championship. So... Uh, yeah, but nonetheless, still a really good season coming up ahead, in my opinion, for UCF. Moving on to your schedule for this team, you start off the season with a tough one against North Carolina at home. And yeah, you got to watch out for that one. North Carolina is definitely a team that you got to watch out for, of course. Uh, with Mac Brown now being their head coach, last season they improved a ton over the year, too. I can't forget about that. I mean, they started off kind of iffy. I mean, they weren't very good at the beginning of the season, but at the end of the season, that team was definitely one to watch out for. So. Yeah, I'd watch out for that game. Florida International on the 12th, very winnable there. You also got Georgia Tech and East Carolina, two road games in a row. Then you got Tulsa to kick off October. You also got Memphis, Tulane, uh, Houston. Then you got Florida AM to kick off November. And then you got Temple, Cincinnati, and South Florida as your usual last regular season game to follow that. So, you know, that being said, their schedule isn't really all that bad. I mean, North Carolina is going to be a tough non-conference game there, but Georgia Tech, that's very winnable. Uh, honestly, Florida International, that's also very winnable. So, you know, with that being said, here's what I'm expecting. I'll give you three guaranteed wins for UCF heading into 2020. Once again, we don't go over every game in our schedule previews. We'll be doing that in our actual predictions, but you know, I'll give you Florida International, Tulsa, and then Florida A&M. Those will be your three guaranteed wins, uh, and certainly there's many more guaranteed wins, or more wins, on the schedule for sure. I mean, like Tulane's very winnable. You could also consider uh, Georgia Tech and East Carolina. Two very winnable games there. Uh, Temple's winnable. So yeah, of course UCF, I mean, there's many more games that they should win than just three, but those are the three that I'm pretty much positive that they will win in the end. But your record estimation for UCF, 8-4 to 10-2. and two. Once again, I do expect them to hang right around where they were last season. It would not surprise me a single bit uh, to see them hit that 10-win marker again. But as far as winning the conference championship next season, once again, still really tough to say. I do expect UCF to kind of contend in there, but I don't know quite yet whether they will be able uh, to win another conference championship or not quite yet. So yeah, stay tuned on that. But your record estimation, once again, for UCF, 8-4 to 10-2. and two. I expect it to be a great season. And quite honestly, this should have no problem making a bowl game. I would be stunned if they didn't. So yeah, that's something that you really don't need to worry about if you're a UCF fan is the bowl game situation. I do expect them to make a bowl game pretty easily. But yeah, that being said, that wraps up our schedule preview on UCF. Once again, let me know your thoughts in the comments below on this team. Let me know whether you disagree with anything that I've said here. But yeah, once again, thank you all for watching. Stay tuned for more from All Sports Central. If you enjoyed this schedule preview, be sure to slap a like on it and subscribe as well. Really helps out the channel, and I'd really appreciate that. But once again, thank you all for watching. Stay tuned for more from All Sports Central, and I will see you all later.